Dear students, Saurabh Pandey this side. I'll be discussing the UPSC 2024 prelims paper in brief only, and we will not be going in detail right now. And uh, obviously, we'll be having a detailed discussion later on about the science and tech portions, and also about the UPSC prelims 2024. But right now, we'll be discussing about the paper that was there, and how the paper uh, was, and uh, how you could have performed, how was the paper, like, uh, what would be an ideal score and all about this. So in this uh, 2024 exam, I can say that the paper was slight moderate type. So last time the paper was tougher, obviously, but this time the paper was slight moderate. And the students, well, coming out of the examination hall were quite happy. So looking at the student face, I may, uh, I could really think that this time the UPSC had been generous. But yes, it was generous, UPSC was generous. But at the same time, obviously, the cutoff will shoot up. So I, I think that uh, uh, discussing with our team, we found that uh, the prelims uh, cutoff could go a little bit higher, around 90 to 95. Uh, that can go up to this much. But at the same time, I can say that uh, science and tech portion that I'll be discussing right now have been a mix. Few questions were really good, and uh, but majority of the questions were easy side, moderate side, and you could have done, you could have scored in it. So uh, without wasting any more time, let us discuss, let's come to the questions and discuss one by one. So with me, I have this paper and I'll be discussing by picking up the questions from science and tech. So the first question that I can see from the science and tech portion is question number second. Consider the following statements. Statement one, India does not import apples from the United States of America. Statement second, in India, the law prohibits the import of genetically modified food without the approval of the competent authority. See, uh, the question is about the genetically modified food. So in this, you can see India does not import apples from the United States of America. This is a wrong statement because India does import apples from United States of America. So in this statement one, it is not specifically uh, talking about the genetically modified food, right? It is only talking about apples from the United States of America. Most of us must have eaten the U.S. apple, right? U.S. apple, we have eaten California apple particularly. And also, uh, India does not import. That means the statement first is wrong. So if the statement first is wrong, our correct answer will be, correct answer will be answer number D. So D is statement first is incorrect and statement second is correct, right? Yes. So this is our correct answer, statement number first. So next question from science and tech is question number eight. With, respect, uh, with reference to the Digital India Land Records Modernization Program, consider the following statements. First, to implement the scheme, central government provides 100% funding. For this program, Digital India Land Records Modernization Program, the central government provides 100% funding. This is a correct statement. Then second, under the scheme, cadastral maps are digitized. Yes, this is true. Cadastral maps are digitized in this. And third one, initiative has been undertaken to transliterate the records of rights from local languages to any of the languages recognized by the Constitution of India. So, uh, Right now, the problem with the land records was that the land records were written in the local languages. But now, in this digital uh, land records modernization program, the land records are digitized as well as it is being converted from the local languages to any of the 22 scheduled languages in, uh, written in the Constitution of India. So in this, all three statements are correct, one, two, and three. So our correct answer will be D, one, two, and three. Okay. Okay. Now, after the eighth question, now we come to the next question. That is question number 58. Which one of the following words or oblique phrases is most appropriately used to denote to denote an interoperable network of 3D virtual worlds that can be accessed simultaneously by millions of users who can exert property rights over virtual items? See, uh, this question is a very simple question and it is talking about metaverse, obviously. Uh, even if you do not know about this question, we can go uh, to this question through the like uh, elimination of the options. So by eliminating, uh, eliminating the options, we can see that big data analytics, obviously in big data analytics, we have large amount, large volume of data. And after that, we analyze the data. So this is not, the question is not talking about the data analysis. Cryptography is obviously not there. Cryptography is all about public key, private key. It is not about, uh, talking about public key and private key. It is talking about 3D virtual world that can be accessed simultaneously by millions of users who can exert property rights or virtual items. So this is not even virtual matrix talking about, but this is metaverse. So our correct answer is metaverse. Okay. Now, after this question number 58, the next question is 61. With reference to radio isotope thermoelectric generators, consider the following statement. RTGs are miniature fission reactors. RTGs are used for powering the onboard system of spacecrafts. And RTGs can use plutonium-238, which is a byproduct of weapon development. See, uh, actually, this question was recently in news during the Chandrayaan launch because uh, during the time of Chandrayaan launch, Russia had launched this... Uh, uh, Russia had launched this uh, like Luna 35. So in this Luna spacecraft, it had used this RTGs, radio isotope thermoelectric generators. So what is this all about? So in this, we use plutonium-235 and plutonium-235 is a self-decaying isotope. So when it decays automatically, it generates heat. And by using this heat, we convert this heat into electricity. So this is used in the spacecraft. So while it is being used in the spacecraft, whenever the spacecraft lands on any other surface outside the Earth, so it can use these RTGs to power the spacecraft. So obviously, it does not use miniature fission reactors. Fission reactors are not used. So first option is incorrect. So we have correct options are second and third. So our correct option will be D, two and three only.
Okay. I hope this is clear to you. Now, question number 60, 60 second. So, 60 second is consider the following statements. Statement one. Giant stars live much longer than dwarf stars. And second, compared to dwarf stars, giant stars have greater rate of greater rate of nuclear reactions. Now, in this question, you will find that uh, we are talking about the stages of stars. In the stages of stars, you will find that giant stars are actually the time when the stars is at the time of its decay. So giant stars are live much longer than dwarf stars. That is wrong. Giant stars do not live longer than the dwarf stars. In this case, again, the statement first is wrong. Now, second statement, compared to dwarf stars, giant stars have a greater rate of nuclear reactions. Obviously, giant stars have greater rate of nuclear reactions since the rate of nuclear reactions is higher. And that is why giant stars die earlier than the dwarf stars. Okay. So statement first is wrong and statement second is correct. So in this case, statement first is incorrect. We can say that our correct option will be option number B. Okay. Now, after question number 62nd, we come to question number 63rd. Which one of the following is synthesized in human body that dilates blood vessels and increases blood flow? Nitric oxide. This is the substance that you have to remember. Nitric oxides are used. Okay. Now, after this, 64th, consider the following activities. Identification of narcotics on passengers at airports or in aircraft. Second, monitoring of precipitation. Third, tracking the migration of animals. In how many of the above activities can radars be used? So in how many of the above activities radars can be used? Obviously, radars are used in monitoring of precipitations, obviously. Tracking of the migration of animals also. We are, we are using radars. And identification of narcotics on passengers at airports or in aircrafts. So in this, all three are options are correct. So our correct option will be all three. Option number C. Right? Now, we come to 65th. Consider the following aircraft. First, Rafael. Second, MiG-29. And third, Tejas MP-1. How many of the above are considered fifth generation fighter aircraft? See, currently, the only three countries have got fifth generation fighter aircraft. And these countries are currently, we have, that is, USA. So, the USA has fifth generation fighter aircraft and they are F-35 and F-22. Similarly, Russia. Right? And then China, Chengdu. So obviously, only three countries have fighter aircraft. India is also on the process of developing fifth generation fighter aircraft, but still it has not yet developed. So out of these three, none of them are fifth generation fighter aircraft. Rafael is 4.5 generation. MiG-29 is fourth generation. And Tejas MK-1 is 4.5 generation. Okay, So none of them are fifth generation. Our correct option will be option number D. Now, after this, question number 66. In which of the following are hydrogels are used? So hydrogels are used for option number first, control drug delivery in patients. Second, mobile air conditioning system. And third, preparation of industrial lubricants. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. See, hydrogels are used in all these three. So hydrogel, hydrogels will be discussing in detail about this topic. So uh, actually, right now, uh, we'll, uh, we'll not be going into the detail as such. But we can say that hydrogels are basically uh, used in medical systems where these hydrogels are kept like this. And it is used in all these three mechanisms. Okay. So one, two, three, all are correct. Now, question number 67. Which one of the following is the exhaust pipe emission from fuel cell electric vehicles powered by hydrogen? So recently, India is also propagating the fuel cell electric vehicles. So it is different from the electric vehicles that we have right now. In electric vehicles, we are converting the electricity into the mechanical energy, right? So electricity is converted into mechanical energy that rotates the uh, armature or the wheel and the vehicle moves. But in fuel cell electric vehicles, we are using hydrogen. So hydrogen reacts with oxygen right? Hydrogen reacts with oxygen to produce water. So in this, the exhaust pipe does not emit carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, but in this case, the exhaust pipe emits water, that is hydrogen oxide. So water vapor. Our correct option will be D. Now, after this, question number 68, in the term, the pumped storage hydropower is actually and appropriately discussed in context of which one of the following? Pumped storage hydropower. Option A, irrigation of terraced crop fields, lift irrigation of cereal crops, C, long duration energy storage, and rainwater harvesting system. So in this case, you can see pumped storage hydropower. What is this pumped storage hydropower? Right? This pumped storage hydropower is all about the water electricity. Water is used. So we are using the pressure difference. We are using the pressure difference. The water comes out. Right? And this is an approach in context with the following. So this water that comes out is used for the irrigation purpose. So this is lift irrigation of cereal crops. Correct option will be option number B. In this case, we are using pressure difference. So water is stored. The pressure difference is created. And due to the pressure difference, water automatically comes out. Okay? Now, we come to the next question. That is, now, uh, we missed one question earlier. That is question number 56. And this is consider the following material. First, agriculture residues. Second, corn grain. 
and third, waste water treatment sludge, and fourth, wood mill waste. Which of the following above can be used as a feedstock for producing sustainable aviation fuel? See, for sustainable aviation fuel, right now we are experimenting with so many things. So these things include like uh, using agriculture residues, and agriculture residues are being used to convert into green diesel. Similarly, corn grain has been much uh, longer in use, and this again used into converting into green diesel and all such kind of things. So all these four are being experimented right now to produce sustainable aviation fuel, right? So in this, our all options are correct. So our correct option will be one, two, three, and four. That is C option one, two, three, and four, right? So in this, you can say that uh, we have. Uh, discussed our uh, science and tech questions. Questions, you can see that it is a mixed question. Like uh, it consisted of a moderate type of questions, barring one or two questions only that can be considered as a